right, guys, we're back. We're talking about the chambers of the heart right now today. So welcome. Hopefully you've gotten through the first couple of lectures and a short lecture assignments. If you need, ever need any help, definitely drop me an email. Uh, we can do the little Google chat thing or we can figure out a Zoom meeting or there's a way we can talk. I'm positive. So if you have questions, I want to know. I will do my best to answer them. All right, let's talk about the four chambers of the heart. So as a reminder, our heart has four chambers. The right atrium, the right ventricle, the left atrium, and the left ventricle. All right, let's jump on in. So here we go. Oh, I'm going to have to adjust my box here. A flat tire. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that's no good. Okay, hang on, guys. I'm going to fix this. Okay, uh, with all the jillions of years of education, guys, I finally figured out... Uh, that I can make this box a little bit bigger. Okay, so we're starting up here in the right atrium. So we're the right atrium. Let's get our little our pointer. I love this. We're gonna use this laser pointer. So here's our right atrium, right atrium, right there. Okay. So the right atrium accepts the oxygenated blood from the coronary sinus. Remember the coronary sinus is back here. Remember that drains the coronary veins. The superior vena cava, which is draining uh, deoxygenated blood from the from the upper body. And the inferior vena cava, which is draining, de which is bringing in deoxygenated blood from the lower bodies, those are all going to feed into our right atrium. Oh, there we go. Come here comes the blood through the superior vena cava, inferior vena cava, and that coronary sinus. Um, hang on one sec, guys. I'm going to fix that. Got a little, got a little issue. This little blue arrow should be pointing at this little hole right here, opening for our coronary sinus. So. Let's fix that. Oh, make sure that um we all know what we're talking about here. Uh, bingo. All right. Do a little bit sharper. Okay. All right. Thank you for your patience as I edit uh, while we present today. <laughs> all right. Here we go. S superior vena cava, inferior vena cava, coronary sinus. Oh, that's much better. All righty. So the right atrium accepts the oxygenated blood, as we said. The right atrioventricular valve. And let's get our pointer right here. Okay. The right atrioventricular valve right here is forced closed when the right ventricle begins to contract, preventing blood flow into the right atrium. So we have this valve called the right atrioventricular valve, and it is anchored into the uh, right ventricle uh, by capillary muscles that can stick up right here, and then chordae tendineae, which are very thin little tendon type of structures that help to um, anchor this valve so that it doesn't totally flip backwards in the heart pump. We'll have a whole little slide series on those valves in just a few minutes. There's our right atrium. Uh, there is the right atrioventricular valve. Also known as the tricuspid valve. Also known as the mitral valve. If you can remember one of those, you are doing fantastic. The right ventricle all right, now we've moved into the right ventricle. Here's our right ventricle. See how that that muscle wall is not super thick, all right, compared to that left side. The pulmonary semilunar valve, which is right here, prevents backflow into the right ventricle. So this is going to pump, but there's also blood pressure out here. So we pump blood out into that um, pulmonary trunk. All right, these pulmonary arteries are going out to the uh, lungs, which we'll talk about in the respiratory unit next week, I believe. This pulmonary semilunar valve looks like little half moons. It keeps that blood from flowing back into the heart. Let's see. Oh, here's our circle, right ventricle. Um, there is our pulmonary semilunar valve. And there goes the blood um, off to the lungs coming out of the pulmonary arteries, left and right pulmonary arteries. All righty, now we're in our left atrium. There's our circle. I always forget. So our left atrium uh, accepts oxygen-rich blood um, from the pulmonary veins. So we see here our pulmonary veins. Remember, they are fully oxygenated. They're going to put that blood into our left atrium, which you can kind of see here, kind of see right here, but it's sitting behind those vessels. The left atrium's contraction sends blood through the left um, atrioventricular mitral valve. Right here, you might sometimes you may hear the term mitral valve prolapse. It closes when the left ventricle contracts. Here comes blood through our pulmonary veins uh, back into the um, left atrium. And then the, the blood is pumped from the left atrium into the left ventricle. Now, this is where the real business is going on, right? we got this big, thick muscular wall going to pump blood out to the body um, through the aorta. So our left ventricle's contraction is going to send blood to the body systems. 
the blood passes through the aortic semilunar valve right here, right here, right here, right here, and into the aorta. Right there. There we go. Aorta. Oh, it's time to work. Hey, guys, there's Zach. Right now, we're climbing on window ledge. <laughs> All right, so now look, take a look at this left ventricle wall. It is really thick. So the left ventricle wall is three times thicker than the right ventricle wall. Um, remember, that's because the left ventricle is pumping blood out to the body. So our blood goes out to the body, goes through the arteries, the arterioles, the capillaries, venules, comes back to the veins, and flows right back into the right atrium. So now we've covered a whole cycle of the arteries. So oxygen-rich blood, here's our little point right here, flows through the arteries, the arterioles, and capillaries where oxygen is exchanged with carbon dioxide. And that deoxygenated blood returns through the venules, veins, and then through the superior and inferior vena cava. So here's our left ventricle, it's done some pumping, our blood leaves, then it comes back in through the vena cava, and now we've got our full circle of blood flow. Well, a little review of those valves we just talked about because we went through them pretty quickly. We have our right atrioventricular valve. It's also known as the tricuspid valve. It's called the tricuspid valve because it has three little cusps or three flaps that come down. So we've got one, two, three, and it's held down by multiple papillary muscles. The pulmonary semilunar valve is right here. Okay, the pulmonary semilunar valve. That so we've got our right atrioventricular valve between the right atrium and the right ventricle. We've got our pulmonary semilunar valve that's sitting between the right ventricle and the pulmonary circuit or the lungs. We have our left atrioventricular valve, also known as the mitral valve. Um, it has two valves. It's also called the bicuspid valve because it has two cusps or flaps. It's also called the mitral valve, and I bring that up simply because you guys may hear the term mitral valve prolapse. That's what happens when we have a weakness in the valves, or it's also known as a leaky valve. That'll have to be fixed surgically, usually by the replacement of that valve, the bovine or cow valve or cavity valve. Our aortic semilunar valve goes from the left um, ventricle, and, and it's just between the left ventricle and the aorta. You okay, buddy? And it prevents backflow because we're going to have blood pressure in that aorta. It's very muscular. Uh, so we need to have a valve there so the blood doesn't get squeezed up and then drop right back down into the heart okay some notes on valve structure you you okay bud yeah you sure you're sweet okay so some notes on valve structure let's get back i got my point i'm going to keep the pointer out actually so cusps are triangular flaps that hang down into the ventricle and the chordae tendinae we saw those are like little little um tiny tendons really that attach to the three cusps of the um, the kind of connective tissue that forms that right atrioventricular valve and then anchors them to the wall of the muscle. Okay, hang on, guys. We've got to spill B. BRB. Hang tight. All right, so we're back after cleaning a small spill. So the chordae tendinae prevent the cusps of the valve or prevent the valve flaps, basically cusps, flaps, same thing, from prolapsing or folding back up into the right atrium when the right ventricle contracts. And it's important because... There's so much force generated by the walls of the heart when the by those heart walls when they squeeze and they pump that they could just force that blood right back up to the atrium and we want unidirectional flow remember because we want blood flowing through the body in one direction only we don't want back flow that would create inefficiencies and decrease oxygen supply to the body. You okay, sweetie? Yeah. I don't know what happened to you, buddy. <laughs> okay. All right. Oh. Wheels are coming off, guys. They are all wet. Come here. <laughs> those, those are socks. Okay. So the pulmonary semilunar valve marks the end of the ventricle and the beginning of the pulmonary trunk where the blood's heading off to the lungs to be reoxygenated. So just taking a look real quick, we got all of our valves and everything to look at here. So we've got our right atrium and our right ventricle. So the heart, the blood, deoxygenated blood arrives in the right atrium from the inferior superior vena cava, the inferior vena cava, and the coronary sinus right there. The heart pumps and that blood is going to dump, be dumped down into the right ventricle. The heart pumps again and here it goes. You know when your heart you hear like bump 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 bump. Well it's flap 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 flap. The first lub you hear is this um atrioventricular valve slamming shut. The second lub that you hear is the pulmonary um, or, or the semilunar valves, aortic and pulmonary semilunar valves slamming shut. So we go right 
atrium, right atrioventricular valve, right ventricle, through the pulmonary semilunar valve, the pulmonary arteries, and out to the pulmonary, the lungs, pulmonary capillaries, uh, pulmonary veins. Uh, coming back through the pulmonary veins, we arrive into the right atrium, fully oxygenated. Then blood passes from the right atrium through the left atrioventricular valve, also known as the bicuspid, also known as the vitral valve, down into the left ventricle that left ventricle then pumps and sends that blood out to the body through the aortic semilunar valve into the aorta where it goes into the arteries of the body system the arterioles the systemic capillaries we drop off oxygen pick up carbon dioxide drop off nutrients pick up waste products then we circulate that deoxygenated waste filled blood back through the venules veins all meeting up into the inferior and superior vena cava and uh, dumping back into the right Atrium, whoop, do the whole thing again. All righty. So here is a good review question. I'm going to take this slide. I'm going to post it in the assignments for the week. And this is going to be uh, the assignment I want you to do. I want you to be able to trace the path of a red blood cell all the way through the cardiovascular system. It's going to be a little painstaking. I would suggest kind of having something to write on, having the slide up in front of you. If you can print it, fine. If you can't, I think you could definitely have the slide open in front of you and think your way through it. Um, start at the right atrium and circulate all the way through the body uh, and all the way through the lungs, all the way around and finish up back at the right atrium. There you go, bingo. Um, and I'm going to erase that slide, so don't worry about it. Okay, guys, so I'm going to jump on over. going to have an a short assignment for you to complete. Um, and then we'll also, uh, the, the assignment you're going to complete for this lecture will be a little bit longer. It's going to be completing this PowerPoint slide. I'll give some more, more points that I think it's really going to help. Okay. All right. That was a giant dinosaur being thrown across the room. Thanks, guys. Hang in there. We're going to make it. All right. Bye-bye.